Today we're going to do a terrific meatless meal. Very light, healthy, and I know, you know, at home, in summer particularly, we eat at least twice a week meatless. I'm not a, a vegetarian, but uh, we do eat very light in summer particularly and use a lot of vegetables. And today what I'm going to do is risotto, a type of risotto. And as you can see here, that type of rice is a round rice, a borio type of rice from Italy, from the north part of Italy. Uh, I've used other rice for that, a short rice, even Thai rice, or small round rice will work well with it. But I mean, the conventional risotto is done with this, even though what we are going to do today is not a conventional risotto. It's a risotto with a lot of vegetable in it. And uh, we'll start with chopping some onion that we are going to add to a little bit of oil and butter that I have on the stove. I have a tablespoon of oil. Uh, I use olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. And that we're going to mix with that onion to start. You know, the conventional risotto is cooked on top of the stove, open, without a lid, adding liquid, stirring, added liquid, and stirring. We're going to do that slightly different here. First with this. Here we are here, and we want to stir that. And in there, I want to use that type of spatula, you know, flat bottom in wood, for the wood to scrape in the bottom of the pan. Metal, wood against metal is much better. So we have our rice here, and I have a cup of rice here, of that one. And we put that in there and stir it with the onion. Now conventionally, hmm, those onions are strong. Conventionally, what you do, you put two or three tablespoons of liquid, let it evaporate, stir it, put more liquid, let it evaporate, stir it, and so forth. In that way, your risotto, for one cup of risotto, I may go up to four cups of liquid. It is not that it's all absorbed by the rice. A lot of it evaporates. For us, it's going to be slightly different because we're going to cover it. So what I'll do first with that, uh, with that cup of rice, one, two, three, Three and a half here, that gives me about two and a half cup of liquid. Two and a half cup of liquid, and I will let that liquid be absorbed. Now, I have a good plant chicken stock defatted without any, without any salt. So I put a dash of salt in there. We're going to cover that, bring it to a, a little boil, and stir it occasionally because it has a tendency to stick. And while this is cooking, we're going to move to our first course which is another course with vegetable, tomato, and grits inside. I know that it's not conventional to serve grits and rice. I mean, you have two, uh, two starts here, one after the other. But this is how menu are done. You know, when you do menu, what you try to do is to use your common sense. You don't do uh, a dough to start with, with a quiche, and finish with a tart with the same dough. And, uh, but after all of that has, has been said, you can come to my house and look at my menu book and you'll find probably a menu which starts with a dough and finish with the same type of dough. What I'm saying is that it's a question of common sense, but if you like it, you do it. And in that case here, we're doing basically two man dish, each one with starch. But this is very light, as you're going to see. So what we'll start, we're going to saute a little bit of onion, garlic, here, a bit of oil. And I have some uh, onion here too. This is for the tomato. So we'll start by, again, chopping onion. I use a lot of onion in my, uh, in my cooking. A lot of onion, a lot of garlic, a lot of scallion. And uh, it's good for you, it's flavorful, it's inexpensive. And the proportion there are relatively not that important. You could put more or less onion, so here I have what I need. And we, this is very nifty, you know, those pastry, what we call a pastry uh, scraper to get your vegetable on the table when you chop something. Here we are. Okay. And in there, what we want to do is to put scallion. The scallion, you know, when you do it, you cut the end of it. Look at the end if those leaves are damaged, but basically there isn't much to remove from this. And that we want to chop coarsely, so I can gather it together. There, you see, I would use a long knife and move forward, down, and forward in that direction. This is the proper way of cutting. Remember that you don't really go 
crashing on top, you go forward or backward, you have to have the motion of cutting. And this is the way you should start with a larger knife. The reason is that it's larger here to put against your finger and hold. Okay. This again, we're going to saute. A lot of color, a lot of texture, a lot of taste. That we saute first. And then garlic, put a bit of garlic. Again, crushing the garlic here. Releasing the essential oil and we chop. Notice that I crush the garlic here. You see when you use a French knife, so-called French knife, there is a return to clear your finger so you can chop. If you use that knife horizontally like this, your hand is in the way, so you have to clear up the table to cut thin or to crush something so that your fingers are not in the way here. And this is our garlic, which I'm going to put on top and then check on my rice. The rice has to be stirred, you know, because as I say, it will have a tendency to stick. And I can go even slightly slower than that, so that it cooks gently. Here we are. Now, in that garnish, again, which I say is a garnish for the tomato, we want to put mushroom. And to chop the mushroom, I just wash those mushrooms. I can chop them coarsely in the food processor. It's very good providing you use the technique, just pulse and start. Mushrooms are light. If I put it on, if I put it on without doing that type of technique, what happens is that the mushroom will fly and with the centrifuge, with the speed, there will be a layer you know, in the air and the other layer get into a mush. So what you do, start, stop, start, stop, so that it has a chance of falling down onto the blade, you know, to have a nice, you know, a very nice, equally uh, chopped mushroom right here. Now those mushrooms are going to render some liquid. And this is often the way you determine the cooking of mushroom. That is, when I put it into the skillet here, you can hear it, it's sizzling. Within maybe a minute or not, it won't be sizzling because the liquid from the mushroom, the, uh, the, the vegetation liquid will come out of the mushroom and it will start boiling. By this time, it starts sizzling again. That liquid is evaporated and the mushroom are ready. So this is our, uh, our stuffing for the tomato, a dash of salt in there. And now the tomato here. As you can see, I have four tomatoes, two are already done. What I want to do is to cut the, the cap of those tomatoes right here, you know. Now often we cut that part, I like to cut the part with the stem to keep the hat to put back on top. Now the best way to Empty this is to use one of those measuring cup, uh, me me measuring a spoon, because it has a cutting edge. And you just go around and cut it this way to empty your tomato. Now what I want to do here is basically keep about one inch, you know, from the tomato, so that I have a wall of about half an inch or so all around and a nice cavity in the middle, you know. Try to put it also in a container like this one, which accommodate the four tomatoes, but fairly tight together, because especially those tomatoes which are very ripe here, will have a tendency to break down, you know, to crush as it cooked, but it's fine, doesn't really matter. So we're going to leave it here, and that we do a sauce with that. Very simply, again, I put that directly into the food processor with a little dash of oil and a little dash of salt. Very easy to make a simple sauce this way. You see that? See, it's starting sizzling and it's going to be ready soon. So now, the sauce. That I want to do here. See, they're very easy. natural sauce, you know. So what we do with this, I could put that directly in the center of this, you know, because we're going to cook with it. 
I'll put the sauce right in there. So we use absolutely everything. This is going, we're going to stuff it. This I don't need anymore. And now what I want to do with the garnish here is the grits. And what I have here, I have grits on this side. First, maybe I should stir my rice again. Yeah, you can see the rice, you can see the bottom of this as I'm pushing like this. So most of the liquid is getting there. Could go slightly faster now. Now here I have grits, and yellow grits is a corn, you know? You have white grits and you have yellow grits, the corn. And we just cook that with water, a dash of salt, and you drop that gently into the water as it's boiling. You know, and the same way that you do polenta, you know, basically that's what polenta is all about, yellow grit, cook with water and salt. And that is used, you know, in a lot of different ways as garnish and so forth. So that would come back to a boil, boil gently for 15, 20 minutes. And what happened, I have one which is cooked right here. And this is what it looks like when it's cooked. As you can see, it's pretty thick, you know, and soft. And this is going to be the base for our um, garnish. So now you can see that this is dry. I can hear it sizzling, so it is ready. I'm going to put that directly in there. Here we are. You know, this is a terrific garnish here. I mean, you know, you could have that as a, as a vegetable by itself, you know? And it would be just about terrific, just serve like this. So what we do here is just stirring it together. Actually, we do that at home, and as I say, eat it just like this. Other garnish, you know, you do like a little, uh, a little bed or a little cushion on a plate and put a piece of fish or a piece of roast chicken on top of it, or whatever, and that's terrific. Often in Italy, that's served with uh, rabbit. You know, rabbit is very good this way. So what we would do here is to spread it out. What you would do is to let it cool a bit more before using it, but for us, we're going to use it right away. I'm going to bring, see if my rice is doing well. As you can see, now the rice is starting sizzle. So what I have to do soon is to put the vegetables. So first, we'll stuff this. You know, in there. And uh, you can be generous, you know, but if you have some leftover, it depends on the size of your tomato. Put one of those on top. Depend on the size of your tomato, what I say, but don't worry about it. If you have some leftover, just use it as a vegetable, you know. Here it is. So as you can see, that starch is very moist because I have a lot of vegetable in it. So the grit are soft. I have a lot of liquid there. The tomato are going to get softer in the oven. What I'm saying is that the whole dish is going to get quite moist and nice, not something dry at all, and that's terrific. The only downfall is that as it cook, sometimes the tomato kind of collapse on themselves, but I don't think it's very important. The only important thing is that it is good to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, that's about uh, the only thing. So as you can see, here I have a bit left. I could maybe have put a bit more on top. And here we are. So this now is going to go into the oven. This could be prepared ahead, you know. And uh, I'm going to put it in there. I have one ready here. And as you can see, this is just cooked. And as I was saying, it has a tendency to fall down on itself a little bit. But again, I don't think it's very important. That tomato is really cooked. We put it there. And a bit of that terrific sauce, you know, natural sauce on top of it and all around. And this makes a great first course, you know, for a dinner. So what we want to do now is to continue working on our rice. And with that, I have the garnish that I'm going to put in the rice. The first thing that I want to do is to put a little bit of that fennel here, because the fennel is going to take longer 
then the rest of the mixture to cook. So I want to put like three quarter of a cup of fennel bulb. This is the bulb of the fennel, which I cut into half inch dice or so. You know, I put a lot of different vegetable in that rice, but uh, you can choose all the type of vegetable. It doesn't have to be this. As you can see, this is cooking a bit fast now. So, let me put this in there and more stock. Now I start adding the stock just a little bit at the time, you know, and scraping the bottom. Yeah, it's starting getting stuck to the bottom, a bit of a crust. You know, we do a crust like that sometimes when you do a paella. Okay. But the, 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 the liquid will release the crust, as you can see now. And, uh, of course, it's going to give it a nice, nutty taste. Not really conventional, but if it sticks in yours like it sticks in mine, just say that you plant it this way because you like the taste of the crust in the bottom which actually I do. So I add here that beautiful fennel bulb, you know. This is great in salad, it has that type of, uh, that smell of anise, you know, that taste of anise also. And in Italian cooking, it's used a great deal. We can even keep some of the surface here to decorate the, the rice later on, you know. So I'll put it here. Now I have another bunch of vegetable here. I have red pepper, I have asparagus, and so forth. Now the asparagus here, I want to show you an asparagus like this one and like this one. So you can see, or maybe even uh, this one is the best. You can see that that asparagus here, the leaves are opening like a flower, you know. This one is tight. This is what you want. So that asparagus, what we've done is to peel the end of it, you know, so that we can use the whole asparagus. And that we're going to put inside. Cut it again in little dice. Remember that this has to cook a couple of minutes first. But then now, putting the rest of the vegetable in it. Red pepper. The red pepper here, you don't really have to, uh, to peel it. If you really want to be fancy, you could peel it, but it really doesn't necessary. You want to look for color also. This is nice and red, you know. That would be good for it. In addition to that, I have mushroom and peas, you know. Those tiny peas that I have here are frozen peas. You can use, of course, the fresh one, but very often I use the tiny baby peas frozen. Those are very good. So here we are. All our array of vegetables. As you can see, there is more vegetable than rice, without any question, in there. And the rice will take all together about 20 some minutes to cook. So here we are here. All my vegetable will go in. This is the untouch of it, you know. At the end, all I'll do is to put a little bit of cheese. Then rice, uh, then the, 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 the peas. This doesn't have to cook very long, you know. And a bit more stock, again, to finish cooking it. Now I don't need that. And I will still stir it. And now what I'm going to do is to cook it uncovered, you know, a bit faster up. I stopped the wrong one. And now I'll keep this to put on top. And what we want to do is our dessert today. And our dessert is a beautiful combination that I have here of cheese and fruit, apple and so forth. I have three types of cheese here. Gorgonzola, uh, no, I'm sorry. Gorgonzola is here, Stilton and Roquefort from France. And what we're going to do first is to cut that in half, take the core out of it. You don't peel it. And that we have for dessert. We cut that into segments like this, about three or four segments per person, you know. And what I want to do is to put some lemon juice on top of that so it doesn't discolorate, you know. And that is the citric acid. 
you can put it directly on top of that, roll it. Here we are. And a little bit of cracked paper. I have some crack, some paper here, and I can crack that paper. This is black paper. And the black paper cone here, it's a great combination. You can do that with pear also. Is to put it directly on your apple here, this way. I have roasted pecan, so there I could arrange it you know, a bit scattering it around this way. You can put some pecan, that is a question of doing a combination of pecan nuts, cheese, you can put a piece of that cheese. We don't serve two big pieces of cheese at home, but I love the gorgonzola particularly. Some green on top of that, and I have basil here, and arugula arugula, basil, and of course, don't forget with that, you want a piece of bread that I have right here. And now, let's see, our rice should be cooked. It is cooked, so we want to put the cheese in it to mix it. And Parmesan cheese, of course, is what we use. Then, we place that directly in that bowl. It should be still slightly soft and soupy. And you could see even that the crust is gone from the bottom of my pan and the rice is ready now. This is a great meatless menu. And I say meatless. It is not a vegetarian menu because I put chicken stock, you know, in the cooking of the rice. You could do it with water if you really want it totally uh, a vegetarian, but it's great this way. This is an interesting menu, you know, you don't really have a first course, a second course. Those two courses are equal value if you want. They can be served as main course. And uh, the tomato is a great way, actually, to use leftover. You know, I have those tomato here, remember, with the grits in it and the onion, all kind of vegetable. But, you know, if you have a roast, anything leftover, you chop it, use it with vegetable to stuff your tomato. If you have fish in the same way, you can serve that cold or hot. This is a great way to use leftover. But with the, the grits, I mean, I'm sure you're going to love it. Then, of course, the, the risotto. The risotto, conventionally, as I say, is cooked with uh, without the lid, you know, on top of the stove, you put a little bit of liquid, stir it, a little bit of liquid, stir it. In that case here, we cooked it in a different way, a lot of vegetable at the end, and it's nice and moist. And that great dessert, type of dessert, which is really a meal in itself with crunchy bread, and that combination of arugula, you know, which is kind of garlicky, or basil with the stilton or gorgonzola, the nuts, and those apple covered with the cracked paper and a bit of... Um, and a little bit of uh, uh, lemon juice on top. That's terrific. We have a salad with our menu. And with that, of course, we would also want to serve maybe an Italian wine this time. We have a Vernaccia here, the San Gemignano. It's from the Vernaccia grape. It's very crisp and dry, and it would go perfectly well with that type of uh, menu that we have today. I'm sure that you can enjoy this summer or winter. Meatless menu is terrific for you. I love to cook that for my family, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy cooking it for your family, too. Try the recipe. You're going to love it. I love cooking it for you. Happy cooking. <laughs>